Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Subhanallahi wa bihamdihi Subhanallahi al-Azim Allahumma salli ala Muhammad al-Nabi al-Ummi wa ala alihi wa ashabi ajma'in Subhanaka la ilma lana illa ma'alamtana innaka antal alimul hakim Rabbi shrah li sadri wa yassir li amri wa ahlul uqdatan min lisani yafqahu qawli اللهم اجعلنا دعاة إليك وإلى رسولك أما بعد فقد قال الله تعالى في كتابه الكريم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قتل أصحاب الأقدود النار ذات الوقود إذ هما عليها قعود وهم على ما يفعلون بالمؤمنين شهود وقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم بلغوا عني ولو آية صدق الله العلي العظيم وصدق رسول الكريم ونحن على ذلك من الشاهدين ومن الشاكرين والحمد لله رب العالمين Indeed all praises are for Allah First and foremost we praise Allah and we thank Allah for having brought us out, for having given us the Iman to direct our hearts towards His house. No doubt Allah is one and He has no partners. We testify that Allah Ta'ala is the creator of the heavens and the earth and everything that is between them. We testify that it is He, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, who has sent to mankind approximately 124,000 Anbiya Adam alayhi salam being the first and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam being the seal of the prophets May Allah ta'ala make us from amongst the believers who will live as believers die as believers and be resurrected on the day of Qiyamah from amongst the mu'minin and the mu'minat and we pray that Allah ta'ala will make us from amongst <coughs> Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's ummah in the akhirat where we will be granted the opportunity to drink from his blessed hands from Hawzi Kawsar. Kulu Amin. <coughs> time and time again, history bears the facts that every single error that came and every single error that went by because of Allah's love for humankind, Allah continued to send Anbiya, Allah continued to send prophets upon prophets, so that this makhlukat and this creation of Allah will have no excuse on the day of Qiyamah in regards to why they followed the path of Zalala instead of the path of Hidayah. Anbiya's came and Anbiya's went. And for every nation, Allah sent one. Some people accepted their prophets and some rejected them. Some people brought Iman in Allah and some did not hasten at all. What we would like to highlight is certain incidents that happened in the past and how Allah Ta'ala has made these incidents known to you and me and how they will continue to be known. They will continue to be read and lessons will be continued to be learned from them. Tests and trials are bound to happen as long as a person says that they believe in Allah. And when we turn the pages of history, we would see that there was no period in time where the name of Allah was absent from this world. It happened in the times of Fir'aun. Pharaoh had a woman who used to look after his daughter. She would put the makeup on, she would comb her hair, she would take care of her. She was the beautician of Pharaoh's daughter. It happened that one day while she was combing the hair of the daughter of Pharaoh, the comb that she was using it fell down. And she bent down to pick it up and she said, Bismillah. The girl, the daughter of Fir'aun, she heard that. And she said to her, 
Are you speaking about my father? Because the father of this girl was that man who said, Ana Rabbukum al A'la. I am your Lord, the Most High. She says, No. I am speaking about my Allah and the, the Allah of your father. The Lord of me and the Lord of you and your father. She says, Is there another God other than my father? Subhanallah. She says, Yes. Allah. This news went to Fir'aun. And the, the incident is mentioned in the ahadith of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that on the night of Mi'raj when he ascended the heavens with Jibreel alayhi salam Jibreel alayhi salam took him to Jannah and while he was visiting Jannah and paradise this beautiful odor, this beautiful smell emanated from a place in Jannah he says Jibreel ma hadha reeh what is this beautiful smell that I'm smelling? What is this beautiful scent? And Jibreel alayhi salam began to explain to him about a woman who was thrown into boiling brass, heated underneath with fire, together with her sons, together with her kids, her children. So much so that the little child she had was suckling, was breastfeeding. She was so hesitant at one point in time to throw this child also into that. The child spoke with the power and the qudrat of Allah that, Ya Ammi, O oh my mother, enter udkul fa inna ka until fil haq because you are upon the path of truth. And this woman also went into that fire with her child. Jibreel alayhi salam is responding to the Rasul. And explaining to him, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, that this is the smell or the scent of that woman who had requested from Fir'aun that after I die, I want you to take my bones together with my children and wrap it in a piece of cloth and bury it. He says that is the smell of that woman, the beautiful odor that you are smelling. The thing about it is that she submitted to one Allah. Even though the odds were against her. It happened in the time of Sulaiman alayhi salam. When the people of Bilqis and the people of Sabah. They were worshipping the sun. They worshipped the sun. They called the sun God. Sulaiman alayhi salam sent out his birds one day. They went flying. Only to be, to be late in his assembly. He says that if these birds cannot give a proper explanation, then I'm going to punish this bird. The bird was known as the Hud Hud. When he returned, he says to Sulaiman alayhi salam, I traveled to such and such a land where I found some people worshipping other than Allah. They take the, the sun for their God. Who is testifying to this? A bird. A bird is speaking and Sulaiman is understanding. And the bird is saying that I found people worshipping other than Allah. Subhanallah. It happened in Surah number 18 of the Quran. A chapter which is known as Surah Kahf. At a time when a tyrant ruler was ruling over the people. When he was forcing the people to submit to the idols that were being worshipped. A set of youths, they took refuge in a cave, together with a dog that was blocking the entrance of the cave, to protect their iman in who? Their iman in one Allah and one Allah alone. Throughout the ages of time, we see that there were people who faced certain consequences in life because they brought iman in one Allah. The beautiful thing about all that, centuries upon centuries upon centuries after, today you and I, we can sit down and we can read of their stories, we can read of the virtues, we can read of the great barakat and blessing that Allah has in store for them. And this is why it is important for you and I 
to understand that just as they faced it, we too will face it. It happened also in a time. One boy, one boy in the land of Yemen, subhanallah, one boy through his dawah, through his effort, through his sacrifice, with the help of Allah, caused an entire community to bring iman upon Allah. If we will read surah which is known as surah Buruj, we will understand this tyrant king. His name was Zu Nawas. Zu Nawas, he was forcing the people to accept Judaism. Worship other than Allah. Subhanallah, he had a monk, he had a sorcerer. And this sorcerer had grown old. So the sorcerer said to him to find me a young boy so who I can teach this sorcery to. So when I die and I leave, you have somebody still to carry on. We know the story, I don't want to go into it at length. But this young boy, they tried a lot of things. Allah had blessed him in listening to a monk also. So sometimes he will go to the saucer and he would listen to him and he will also go to this monk. One day it happened that a big animal blocked the pathway and people couldn't pass. He says, today I'll find out who is on the correct path. He says, if the monk is on the correct path, then oh Allah, Cause this animal to go away. Cause me to kill this animal. And it so happened that it happened like that. So he started to bring Iman in Allah through the dawah of the monk. It so happened that this young boy started to heal the blind. Cure the lepers. People with different diseases and sicknesses. Allah granted him that shifa. That he was able to cure them. Subhanallah, one day he cured the blind man who was working for this king called Zu Nawaz. When he returned to the palace, he went and sat down on his seat. So Zu Nawaz was shocked that this blind man, he walked directly to his seat and he sat down. He says, yes, my Lord has given me back my sight. He says, I have given you back your sight? He says, no, not you. My Lord and your Lord has given me back my sight. He says, you have another Lord besides me? Problem started. It also started for the boy. They tried to kill the boy at different times. Took him up to a mountain to throw him off the cliff. He came back walking to them. Carried him in the sea to drown him. He came back walking to them. He says to Zunawas, you will not be able to kill me until you follow my instructions. What was the instructions? He says, gather all the people together. Gather them together. And have a big assembly. And, call, and take me and tie me to this tree. Take a bow out from my quiver. An arrow out of my quiver. And before you shoot it, say, Bismillah. Rabbil Gulam. In the name of Allah. The Lord of this boy. And then shoot it at me. And this is the only way you will be able to kill me. Subhanallah. He did that. Got the boy. Tied him to the tree. Invite all the people. And uh, took the arrow out from the quiver. And he shot at the temple. Bismillah. Rabbil Gulam. In the name of Allah. Lord of the boy. And shot him. The boy put his hand on his head on the temple and he fell down and he died. When the people saw that, subhanallah, what did they say? Amanna bi rabbil gulam. We bring iman upon the Lord of this boy. Zunawas became angry. What he was trying to do, he failed. All these people accepted the deen of this boy, the religion of this boy. It was Christianity at that time, but they were the true Christians who worshipped Allah, the one God. What he did, 
he dug trenches. And some others, he slaughtered with the sword. Hadith of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, 20,000 people who had brought Iman in Allah, he burned them alive in this ditch. And this is what the surah speaks about. Qutila ashabul uqdud. The people of the ditch. Subhanallah. Allah says, Cursed be the people of the ditch. And nari dhatil waqood. Of fire fed with fuel. 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 Idha hum alayha qu'ud. When they sat around these people. وَهُمْ عَلَى مَا يَفْعَلُونَ بِالْمُؤْمِنِينَ شُهُودٍ And they were witnessing what was being done to these people who brought Iman in Allah. وَمَا نَقَمُ مِنْهُمْ إِلَّا أَنْ يُؤْمِنُوا بِاللَّهِ الْعَزِيزِ الْحَمِيدِ They had no fault whatsoever except that they believe in Allah, the mighty Al-Hamid. And this person, Zunawas, one person escaped from his grip. And that person, he went to the land of Sham. And he met with the emperor or the king, the Caesar. He complained about the, tyr the tyranny of Zunawas. And the Caesar, he wrote a letter to the king of Abyssinia, and Najashi. And an Najashi, he dispatched two people to the land of Yemen. Together with this person. To bring an end to this man called Zunawas. A man by the name of Abraha Ashram. And a man by the name of Aryat. They came with a mighty army to the land of Yemen. And they fought against this tyrant ruler. They took him by surprise. Zunawas. Destroying his army. Defeating his army. He also fled the scene and he was he drowned in the sea. Subhanallah. These two people took control over Yemen now. Two Christians. They brought back, they brought, brought back the way of life. Peaceful life in the land of Yemen. But subhanallah, guess what happened? After these two became leaders, you know, only one of us could lead. Only one of us could have power. Only one of us could have control. So they started to fight between themselves. This army against this army. Ariat and his people against Abraham and his people now. Both of them said, look, instead of our people dying out and killing out themselves, let's come to, an, to a conclusion. Let us make a decision amongst ourselves. Let's have a duel. Let's fight one another. You against me. Whoever is victorious, that is the one who is going to be the leader. They fought and subhanallah, Abraha, he became the leader in Yemen. Abraha was a man of strategy, a lot of strategy. He, he had a lot of ideas in his mind. The land of Makkah was there. Ibrahim alayhi salam centuries before had made a dua. We know of the dua in the Quran. Rabbana wa ba'ath fihim rasula minhum yatlu alayhim ayatika wa yu'allimuhum al-kitaba wal-hikma wa yuzakkihim. He also made another dua when Ibrahim alayhi salam says in the Quran wa idha qala Ibrahim rabbi ja'ala hadha baladan aminan wa uzuk ahlahu min al-thamarat Man amana minhum billahi wal yawmil akhir. Oh my Allah, make this land a land of peace. Make this land a land of prosperity. Wawzuk ahlahum min thamarat. Bring risk, bring fruits, thamarat to its people in the desert land. Two things in every, in every country. We need for stability in the country. Two things. One is Aman, peace and security. And the other thing is prosperity. They can't go without each other. If you have a country that is prospering in regards 
there is resources and there is no peace, it will not survive for long. If there is only peace but there is no prosperity, then how are we going to live? Look at the foresight of Ibrahim alayhi salam. Bring peace and prosperity to this land which is known as Makkah. And send unto them a prophet from amongst themselves who will recite unto them the verses, who will purify them, who will educate them, who will teach them. This was a dua made centuries ago. This land of Makkah, it became sacred. It became holy. It became peaceful. It became sanctified. It became prosperous. Business was flourishing in the land of Makkah. When Abraham saw that, that the Arabs of Yemen, they would go to Makkah for trade. They will come back. They will go to Syria. They will trade with each other. And also at the time of Hajj, they would leave and they would go to perform pilgrimage around the Holy Kaaba. He taught himself, in order to make this economy stable, in order to bring business in this land of Yemen, I'm going to build a monument. Subhanallah, who am I going to build this for? I'm going to build this for an Najashi in Abyssinia, in Ethiopia. And he built a synagogue or a church so high, history have stated, that it was called Al Kulais. It was so tall that you'll break your neck backwards to see the top. So tall it was. What was his intention and motive? To keep the Arabs of Yemen in the land of Yemen to make tawaf and hajj around that church. They couldn't take that. They couldn't take that at all. Subhanallah. Some people, they got together and they went into that place. It is stated, two narrations come. They defecated. Some said that some Bedouin Arabs came and they light a fire outside to keep themselves warm. The wind was blowing very heavy that day. The wire caught on the building. So the building, it was burnt. When Abraham found that out, he made a pact, a pledge, that I'm going to destroy the Holy Kaaba. And we know the entire Kissa and the story of the elephants. But this is not the story of the elephant that I want to talk to us about. Everything that we have spoken about, it is Allah. Allah, the woman who was thrown into that fire, the beautician of the daughter of Fir'aun, she kept Allah. She kept Allah, that boy that gave that dawah and caused all these people to become worshippers of Allah. He kept Allah in front. That bird, the vision of the bird was Allah. The people of the cave, Allah. Iman, their Iman was linked to that. When it came to this elephant that they led to destroy the Kaaba, it was something that a person by the name of no Nufail ibn Habib, he was one of those people from Yemen, one of the Arabs, when he heard that Abraham was going to destroy the Kaaba, he says, this can't happen. He put up a fight against Abraham. He was held as a captive. They were defeated. He went together with Abraham. When they reached in front of the Kaaba, he held on to the ears of this animal, this elephant. And he said something into the ears of the animal. What did he say to the animal? He says to the animal, kneel. Kneel. Kneel down. Guess what? The animal, it kneeled down. He says to the animal, Warji' Rashidan, return. Min haythu ji'ta. Return to that place that you had come from. Go back from where you came from. Because you are in the sacred city of Allah. This word that he said to this animal is the word that I want us to understand. Kneel. What does Allah say in the Holy Quran? Allah says, وَإِذَا قِيلَ لَهُمُ ارْكَعُوا لَا يَرْكَعُونَ When it is said to them to make ruku, 
When it is said to them, Bow down. La yarkaun. They desist from bowing. They desist from kneeling. Wa aqama salata wa ata zaka. Warka'u ma'arraki'in. Allah says about Bani Israel. Allah commanded them what? Establish salah. Give zakah. Warka'u ma'arraki'in. And bow down with those who bow down. Subhanallah. Ata'muruna nasa bilbiwri wa tansawna anfusakum wa antum tatluna al-kitab. They commanded the people, only do that. But we for ourselves, we aren't doing it. Afala taqilun, you have no sense. When Allah commands us in the Quran to kneel and to bow down, when Allah commanded people in the past to kneel and bow down, this person who held the ears of that animal, he's not a Muslim. They worship idols, but they knew of the sanctity of this place, the Kaaba. They knew of the sanctity of the house, the Kaaba. That Ibrahim and his son had built this house. Subhanallah. Going to destroy it. And now it takes a turn. The animal kneels down. When the animal kneels down. They can't get it to get up back. They start to beat the animal. They took an axe and they started to hit the animal. They started to pierce the animal. They started to cut the animal. Blood started to flow from the animal. Subhanallah, they got it up, turned it to Yemen, it started to walk. It started to walk. They turned it to Sham, it started to walk. They turned it to the east, it started to walk. When they turned it towards the Kaaba, it kneeled down again. It kneeled down again. Do you remember Umar radiallahu ta'ala an? He was going to kill the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He was going to slaughter the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He was going to finish him once and for all. What happened? A little dawah. He turned the wrong. He turned the wrong. Just like the animal turned the wrong. Just like the field turned the wrong. Just like the elephant turned the wrong. On hearing a little dawah about Allah, you are in the city of Allah. This is the house of Allah. Go back where you came from. How many of us, when we hear Allah, we turn around? We turn around. This animal, subhanallah, if you understand the name of the animal, it's called Mahmoud. Mahmoud. When we make dua, in regards to the adhan. Subhanallah. Mahmoodan illadhi wa atta inna ka la tuqliful mi'ad. Use the same word. Mahmood. Praiseworthy. Allah Ta'ala was observing all of this. Many times, many times in the past, we see things happen. Allah gives us rope. Allah gives us time. Allah gives us time to come back, opportunities and chances to come back, to change the course of our lives. He gave Abraham also many opportunities because when this very said man, Nufail bin Habib, and his people came in front of him, that was an opportunity. To fight with him, don't go there. Don't go there. Again, he went further. Another person came in front of him with his people. Don't go. He destroyed them also. When he reached the land of Toif, the Toif people, they give in. They can't fight him. They give in to him. He sent a person for Abdul Muttalib because he had already seized some camels belonging to Abdul Muttalib who was the grandfather of the Rasul. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Mind you, the Prophet Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is not is not born as yet. He has not come into the face of the earth as yet. This year, according to history, is known as Amul Fil. An elephant. Allah used Ashab al Kaf and kept them alive for centuries. For centuries. Until today, we still read about the history of Ashab al Kaf. Allah has made them famous because of their Iman in Allah. That bird which is called Hudhud. 
Allah made that bird famous. We read it all the time in the Quran. Its name is mentioned in the Quran. Allah made it famous for all time to come. This woman that we read about, the hadith of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allah has made her famous also for all times to come. This little boy that stood up against Zunawas, Allah made him famous too for all time to come. Their names will remain in the books of history. This animal Allah named an entire surah called the chapter of feel. Surat al-feel. What about you and me? In which book of, of fame would our names be written? What is it that we are doing to stand up and turn our lives around for the sake and the pleasure of Almighty Allah? On the day of Qiyamah, when Allah Ta'ala will call His people, He will lift the claw that is covering his shin, the Quran says. He will make his shin bare. The saq. Yawma yukshafu an saqin. Wa yudu'awna ila sujudi fahum la yastati'oon. The day when Allah will make his shin bare. And he will call the people. And he will say to them, make sujda. Prostrate. Wa hum la yastati'oon. They will not be able to do it. They won't be able to bend their backs. The Prophet says on the day of Qiyamah, when Allah makes his shin bear, Allah Ta'ala will call the believers, the men and the women, they will prostrate before Allah. They will bow down before Allah. But subhanAllah, those people who prostrated in the earth to be seen of men, those people who prostrated on the earth to get some kind of good reputation in this dunya, the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, sad to say, they will not be able to prostrate on the day of Qiyamah. They can't make sijda, they can't bend, they can't bow, they can't kneel. They can't. Why? Because everything that they did on the earth, it was for the wrong reason and the wrong purpose. What will happen to us when Allah has commanded us to prostrate five times every day? What will happen to us on the day of Qiyamah? Today we see some people a little pinched nerve. Eh? <clears throat> a little pinched nerve. And you can't make ruku. Can't bend your back. They put a plaster on your back now. Yeah. Subhanallah. We see that happening all the time. What will happen on the day of Qiyamah when we don't prostrate in this dunya for the pleasure and the sake of Allah? The birds Allah Ta'ala started to send. As a matter of fact, Abdul Muttalib, when he went back to the land of Makkah, after reclaiming his animals, Abraha says to him, you have come here to talk about camels? He says, I am the owner of the camel. The house also has an owner. I have come to secure my belongings. The owner of the house will secure the house. Our Abraha says to him, I looked at you as a man of high esteem. When you walked in here, I was, starting to, I was shivering. Because Abdul Muttalib was a strong built man. He says, but the moment you started to talk about your camels, I started to lose respect for you. You fell in my eyes. Abdul Muttalib took his camels and he went back. He went back to the Kaaba. And he stood in front of the door of the Kaaba. And until today, until today and until Qiyama, in front of the door of the Kaaba, it's called Multazam. In front of the door of the Kaaba, the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, when a person makes tawaf, and after tawaf, he stands in front of the door of the Kaaba and makes dua to Allah. Most certainly, has a dua un maqbulun in Allah. This is an accepted time and place where dua are accepted. He held on to the latch. The iron latch on the door of the Kaaba, Abdul Muttalib held on to it. 
and he says lahumma lahumma innal mar'a yamna'u rihlahu famna rihlaka la yaglibanna salibuhum wa mihaluhum abadan mahalak he says o oh allah o oh allah this man inna mar'a yamna'u rihlahu this man has taken possession of his belongings he has taken what belongs to him meaning he abdul mutalib he has taken back his camels he says famna famna rihalak O oh Allah you also take care of your possession mean in the house La yaglibanna salibuhum don't let their cross dominate this land Wa mihaluhum don't let their strategy dominate this land this land that is aminan peaceful this land that is prosperity has a lot of prosperity don't let their strategy and the cross come to dominate this land oh allah subhanallah he says after making that dua the yaqeen and the certainty came in his heart and those quraish people who are, was with him the certainty came in their hearts that today allah is going to destroy abraha they didn't know where it was coming from but knowing that that place is a place where dua are accepted the yakin came in their hearts remember these people are idol worshipers eh? idol worshipers they not worshiping allah you know but they knew ibrahim khalil allah and ismail alayhi salam zabihullah built the kaaba they knew that they knew that allah was rabbul kaaba they knew that because even in surah quraish rabba hadhal bayt they knew that the lord of this house from the time he made that dua he said to his family and his people let's go to the nearby mountains because today allah is going to destroy abraha and his army and lo and behold allah taala mentions in the surah from the seas from the oceans nufail bin habib he says i saw it coming i saw it with my very eyes coming from the ghaib and from the unseen allah al muntaqim the one who takes revenge the one who will avenge the one who takes retribution allah azuntiqam from the unseen Alam tara kaifa faala rabbuka bi ashab alfil O Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam have you not seen he was nowhere wrong nowhere wrong how Allah has revealed this surah to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam Alam tara have you not seen faala rabbuka bi ashab alfil how your lord dealt with the people of the elephant how could he have seen it commentators of the quran says while this was revealed to muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam it was revealed also the question was also to every single individu individual who was dwelling at that time have you not seen have you not seen have you not seen allah was asking every single person who had witnessed it with their eyes have you not seen subhanallah how your lord dealt with the people of the elephants alam yaja'al kaidahum fi tadlil they were planning they were planning to destroy it that we will take the chains and we will put it under the pillow of the kaaba and we will put the chain around the neck of mahmud and we will strike him and he will pull the kaaba down every single brick will be broken subhanallah this was their plan Alam yaja'al kaidahum fi tadlil Have you not seen how Allah Ta'ala caused their plan to just mash up it went away Subhanallah Wa arsala alayhim tayran ababil At a time when nobody had iman in Allah when there was no one to protect the house of Allah Subhanallah the monument of Allah the symbol of Allah Allah sent birds 
wa arsala alayhim tayran ababil and allah sent birds in groups groups and groups of birds small like a pigeon subhanallah allah says in every in every claw of the bird every claw there was a pebble and one in the beak and these pebbles were like small lentils lentils but guess what guess what it was more destructive than the atomic bombs that we have more destructive than that that every one this pebble touched it destroyed them it started to break their limbs off from their bodies it started to destroy them so much so that their limbs from the body started to fall apart you know like when a person have sugar when you have sugar and you can't drink too much sweets and thing and eat too much sweets suddenly you find your st your body start to disintegrate they start to cut out a toe cut off a finger cut off here cut off there until your whole body just what it started to fall apart abraha he didn't die in that he didn't die in that but he was also struck by the pebbles until he started to run back to his land in yemen when he reached to that place his body was in such a state disintegrated it started to give out a scent his heart fell out from his chest people didn't want him around they dug a hole way out in the out from the city and they threw him in that hole and they buried him there nobody wanted to come close to him what is allah really teaching us here in this surah so many lessons to learn one is one of obedience obedience the moment we hear it the moment we hear it the response is sami'na wa ata'na we hear and we obey kneel mahmud kneel mahmud knelt an elephant an elephant when we, when we are told to bow down when we are told to prostrate when we are told to obey allah sami'na wa ata'na we hear and we obey turn our lives around just like the animal was going to destroy the kaaba one dawa and he turned his life around we also we are in wrong we are in gaflat we are in negligence dawa and dawa and we are reading and we are seeing where the ummah is today we are seeing what is happening we have heard of the stories of the past of ad and samud and firaun we have heard about it we have read about it the yakin has to come in our hearts that this is true whenever we go against allah whenever we go against the teachings of allah whenever we go against the symbols of allah allah will give us rope give us rope give us rope but then allah is going to snatch us he's going to take us just like he gave them rope and he took them back the other thing about this as long as you have iman in allah allah is going to take your name far and wide allah is going to carry on a legacy for you that your name will live on not like abraha when people hear it they will say him no not like him subhanallah allah will keep your name like bilal radiallahu an like khalid bin walid radiallahu ta'ala an like umar al farooq radiallahu ta'ala an like ali radiallahu ta'ala an based on your obedience to allah and remember when someone harms you when someone hurts you when someone tries to plot against you when someone tries to do evil to you just call on allah like abdul mutalib an idol worshiper called on allah and from the unseen allah will send his help to you allah will send his help to you all we need to do is to submit like mahmud the elephant submitted to allah we beg allah 
that he will help us to understand the teachings of the Quran. He will help us to understand the reality of obedience to him and his Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa because that is what deen is about, obedience. We beg Allah that he will show us the truth, guide us on the truth. We beg Allah that he will give us everything that is good for, good for us in this life and that he will give us the best in the life to come. And may he write our names in history as those people who he is pleased with and not as those who his ghazab and his anger would have fallen upon. We beg Allah to open the Jannah and the Paradise for us and reunite us with our Nabi Muhammad Mustafa Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam on the day of Qiyamah. Wal Akhir Dawana and Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen.